Okay, let's move on. So we've uh, done this link, uh, that link, and uh, that link in the starter of the installation guide of the Arch Wiki. So for more detailed information, see the respective Arch Wiki articles. Um, more information, how it works, history. Okay, nothing to find here for us. And there is also the man pages. So I always say, guys, um, check out if there is a man page on an application. So you ask man and then the application. I don't know if Inksy has anything, man Inksy. Oh yeah, sure. So you read this, it's a manual and it's uh, ready. It's there, um, figure out what you need. And then um, often you need a kind of switch or an option that you have to activate. IRC channel, we're not going to use that, but the forums is interesting. So you check out if you have hardware issues. That's a particular interesting here. And then you type in your specific laptop or hardware piece and you start figuring out what elements you're missing. So that's the forum for you. And Arch Linux should run on an x64 bit, so a 64 machine. I don't know if this still exists, 512 megabytes RAM, but um, very old machines probably do have that uh, amount. But most of us are on 2, 4, 8 or 16. A basic installation from the base group. That's also interesting to know that there is a base group and there's a base development group. And actually we need both of them. So it should take less than 800 megabytes of disk space. Okay. We're going to get it from the remote repository. A repository is a place where all the files are being kept, actually executable files. Not uh, like in AOR package builds. Those are recipes. So this is actually a application. This guide assumes a working internet connection is available. Not as fair as an interesting sentence here, of course. Um, it means that your router is working, that you have paid your bills, that your internet service provider or ISP is providing you internet, that everything is cabled or wireless working, everything is functioning. By the way, um, my advice always is go via cable, but I do know that uh, many of my, or not many, one or two out of a hundred have a um, laptop without, you hear me correctly, without an ethernet port. So that's the difficulty for them. They have to go straight away to the Wi-Fi uh, setup, which is more difficult, I feel probably because I've done it, because I just plug in the LAN cable and it just works out of the box. So why make it more difficult? Okay. This means we are finally in the pre-installation, download and boot installation. Man, nah, 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 nah. Okay. Um, so we need to download the ISO. That's one thing. So we go to the downloads, open link in new tab. We click on the magnet link for 2018-41 or the torrent link. In Arco Linux, it uh, says, hey, should I use transmission? Yes, yeah, sure. Remember my choice for magnet links, open link. And okay, I already downloaded it, but um, remove, I'm not sure why it says this thing here now. Open, okay. So maybe that's because I already downloaded it. Anyway, I'm going to re-download it for you guys just to see how um, it looks in transmission. But it's already there. So what I can do in the meantime is uh, set up VirtualBox. So you see it's quite fast, as fast as SourceForge actually. Arco Linux is about the same speed as um, the torrent here. All depends where you live, of course. I'm from Belgium and downloads are super fast like this number here 22 megabytes per second on sourceforge let's wait a few seconds and then we have this iso in it's not much it says on 600 megabyte but then of course you end up in a black terminal so remove this one and now we have a file in 
the downloads. Let's clean everything a little bit up. So that has can go and all those guys can go. So this one is what we downloaded. And from there, I've already here in documents already downloaded it. So as this can go. So setting up my virtual box, that's the next thing I should do. Virtual box. So downloading and virtual box. That's the topic. New Arch Linux. Arch Linux 64 bit, of course. I'm going to give really it. Okay, so 50 50, create, create, dynamically allocate. This time I'm going to type it. I'm going to give 30 gigabytes. Okay, great. So we have a figure, a round figure, when I'm going to partition my 30 gigabytes. We have uh, said that, then the settings here, we need to tell that uh, there are more, pro more cores in the system. And we also need to tell that we have here this. Now I should not forget to tell that we need to enable EFI. So when checked, the guest will support extended firmware interface, EFI, which is required to boot certain guest OSs. Yes, non EFO. It's gone. Non EFI aware OSs will not be able to boot if this option is activated. Well, Arch Linux is EFI aware, and I want to make a tutorial not about Grub because Grub would be this. That's on eridubois.be already. I want to try out enable EFI. So okay, I know that. Um, well. I need this setting because I have this new computer since uh, May 2017 and it's an EFI. So I'll need it to install it on SSD as well. Um, all right. So, 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 optical drive is empty. Choose disk. Uh, Eric's documents. Yep, fine. So we are now April. So it's the release of April 01. You might say, hey, what, what the heck, um, it, rolling release and you release every month an update. So that's the only thing these guys do. Arch Linux give a monthly update just to make sure that uh, the updates do not be, and are not too big. You know, if you had this SSD that was lying around for five months and then I did a pseudo Pacman minus SYU and then you get 1.5 gigabytes in. So. That's the same thing here. Um, the Arch Linux ISO is a minimal ISO, but it is a, gets a monthly update, so you don't need to download a lot of information. That's all. Okay, everything set up. It's uh, time to uh, stop this video and start booting up.